Hey Flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios and welcome to Hobby Heroics. In this video I'm going to be painting a water elemental and some of what I'm doing here will be specific to this Relic Blade Mini but I'd approach a water elemental from any setting with similar steps and colors. I'm going to begin by giving the entire model a base coat of P3 Exile Blue using an Elf Cosmetics Eye Crease Brush. The exact shade of blue I use isn't important, it just has to be dark. Now the sculpt of this water elemental is nice and wide open, everything is easy to reach, there's no hidden areas and that makes this base coat go down quite quickly. Next I'm moving on to a brighter mid-tone blue, in this case P3 Signar Blue Highlight. I'm using more of a dry brush approach now, unloading the paint from the brush and letting some of the deepest details show the darker blue. Now I'm repeating the process with an even brighter blue using P3 Arcane Blue. I'm continuing to apply this with a dry brush technique, building up on the existing darker shades. The exact paints I'm using aren't terribly important as long as each blue is brighter than the last. Now I'm dry brushing on P3 Underbelly Blue. This is a cool off-white that I often use as a base coat for painting whites. Citadel Blue Horror or Fenrisian Grey would work equally well. With this color, I'm making sure to pass over most parts of the mini multiple times to really brighten it up. I only want dark tones showing in the deepest creases now. At this point I'm done dry brushing and want to start adding some deliberate highlights. I'll be using P3 Moro White, thinned down slightly with a little water, and a size 2 brush from Game Envy. Initially I'm using this white paint to pick out the teeth and eyes, turning them into bright focal points. In Sean's art, this elemental is drawn with bright white eyes and I really liked that look. It reminds me of certain deep sea fish like the loose jaw fish. My goal here is to really capture the idea that this creature is made out of water. Some of the highlights will form the crests or peaks of small ripples in the mini surface, while others will catch natural edges like the gills and fins. I've slightly thinned down the moral white with water, which helps make it a little transparent, blending it with the blue base coats. P3 Moral White is one of my favorite white paints. While not as opaque as some others like Pro Creel Bold Titanium White, it's very well suited to blending. In places where I need a more substantial hit of white, I simply add a second or third layer. Here I'm picking out the highest points on the mini, specifically the spine-like ridge along its back. If this were actually a creature made out of living water, this would be the point where the water would crest or foam and give us that white peak to the top of a wave. I'm continuing the same approach as I work my way down the miniature, painting the raised crests and edges with white and blending it back to the blue base coat on softer details. I decided to take another pass at the face, making the whites along the jaw and gills even more obvious. At this point the blue and white detailing is basically done, 
but I want to bring in some shades of green and purple to really make the water feel deep and lively. I'm going to use some P3IO and green, and I'm using water to really thin this down so it's just a nice translucent tint. I'm testing the coverage on my thumb before I apply it to the model in almost random spots. Mostly, I'm bringing this green into darker areas like the underside of the mini, or where it meets the base, but I'm also using it to help isolate the fins from the main body and to accent the jaw. Now I'm using P3 Bad Brews to add some similar purple spots. Again, I've thinned this with water and I've tested the translucency on my thumb before tinting the mini with it. I'm kind of using the green and purple tints interchangeably. They're both here to vary up the color of the water and make it feel more complex and deep. The nice thing about a thin tint like this is that you can feather it out quickly with a fingertip. You can work these shadow tints in anywhere the blue feels a little bit flat to improve the contrast. Understandably, I want more shadow on the underside of the mini than anywhere else. A little shading behind the jaw can make that jaw feel more prominent and menacing. I wanted to make the mouth feel deeper than it already is, so I pushed the shadow in the mouth with a purple tint as well. Similarly, I wanted the eyes to stand out a little bit more, so I'm bringing just a bit of the purple tint around and underneath them. After I finished with the shading, I decided that some of the white spots could still be a little bit more vibrant, so I'm coming back in with some P3 Moro White and just pushing a few of the highlights even further. I really love how the greens, purples, and blues all work together to really make this feel like it's living water. You've got the illusion of algae, deeper shadows, and really bright, flashy points that all just make it feel like it's alive and moving. And there's the finished water elemental. This mini comes from the Kingdom of Akkad faction set for the excellent skirmish game Relic Blade and was sculpted by my friend Sean Sutter. You can learn more at relicblade.com. Thanks for watching, and until next time, do something epic.